I heard the no, line, you diss me, not going to reply. I'm a nice guy. Now, man. somebody's going to send a I'm shot. I'm not like you, man. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a nice guy. You are a nice guy. I'm nice. But you're you're, you're just too witty for your own good. I be beefing with loser niggas. <laughs> I be beefing with loser sensitive niggas. I and, don't see it. And it's my job as a rapper to let niggas know that they if, can't. If I get this, it's going to be it's gonna be a female trying to get at me, I bet. Joe Budden is hip-hop's favorite one-pump chump. It's unfair to call him a one-hit wonder in reference to his 2003 hit song, Pump It Up. Because let's not forget his amazing track with Lil Wayne, She Don't Put It Down, absolutely stormed the Billboard charts in 2012, peaking at a healthy 96. But let's not get it twisted, you gotta give Joe credit where credit is due. Because despite his challenging career, constantly battling against the ups and downs of label politics, fighting against having this one-hit wonder and general legal issues, Joe has always still managed to come through with straight bars. Joe has turned in eight albums, 26 singles, six mixtapes, and over 30 guest appearances. So just because Uncle Joey isn't on Billboard doesn't mean he isn't getting busy in the booth. But in a lot of ways, Joe is the antithesis of Drake. If Joe Budden was an item of clothing, he would be a baked bean stained wife beater. And if Drake was an item of clothing, he would be an $11,000 custom Brioni jacket with his name stitched in the breast. And look, we all know that Drake's got more slaps than the Beatles, including the ones that Diddy gave him. In fact, Drake's Wikipedia page is longer than the list of women that claim that he's knocked them up. Drake's released five studio albums and 131 singles, either with him as the lead artist or a feature. He's won a total of four Grammys, as well as 132 miscellaneous music awards out of 532 nominations. This guy's getting nominated for everything. In fact, today, Drake has had 186 songs on the Billboard charts. And that means that the current Billboard exchange rate for one Drake is 93 Joe Buddens. And let's keep it real, who wants 93 Joe Buddens? But living in such a big ivory tower attracts negative attention too. Drake famously beefed with Meek Mill and many people were surprised to have seen the soft-spoken singing rapper get the upper hand against such a street dude. And for many years after that, Drake seemed pretty much untouchable until of course he got bodied by Pusha T. But in a largely overlooked and kind of unusual beef, Drake decided to go head to bald head with everyone's favorite podcaster, Toe Budden. And if I'm honest, the outcome was pretty surprising. So let's get into the beef. Joe Budden TV, and look who it is. Yes, Drizzy. grateful to be here. You know? Drizzy, Mr. So Far Gone. Yep. It's yep. come, you've, you've taken over New York City. Yeah, and just a, you didn't just catch me out here, too. I came to support Joe. <laughs> come on, come, come on, on, come man, on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so I can't be honest on your, uh, on your network here? I can't be honest to your fans and say I'm honored to be around you? Drake and Joe Bottom were friends together for many years. This was mainly around the time of Drake's come up and Joe's come down. A come down which I'm sure that he's had many of considering how much molly he takes. So Drake has his come up, Joe has his hard come down, and these two are industry acquaintances for several years, but everything seems to go south after one little release. Congrats on, uh, on the album right Thank here. You. Thank you. And everything, there you are. There you are up there. I was gonna cut. That's you, that's you sitting like that. That's right, that's you like that. Following the launch of Drake's album Views, Joe was not impressed. Now, if you're plugged into the hip hop culture, you might know that at this stage, Joe Budden has done quite a lot to overcome his one hit wonderdom. The Joe Budden podcast started life in 2015 under the well thought out name, I'll name this podcast later. Good to see that Joe Budden put at least more effort into naming his podcast than he did his debut album, Joe Budden. In the podcast, we see Joe discussing current affairs in hip hop and beyond with two co-hosts who are inexplicable less relevant than Joe. So on May the 4th, or Star Wars Day, as it is known the world around, after Drake's Views album dropped, Joe Budden decided to dedicate an entire episode of his podcast to reviewing Views. A review of Views. So I've gone and viewed the review of Views. I think it was a stream of consciousness on track number one, right? Mm -hmm. Track number two might be the worst follow-up to track number one I've ever heard on any Drake project, and I love that song. That song is indicative of my point. Drake, who has been on my list, of a nigga who has not had an undeniably whack verse in years. I didn't even give him one until my way with Fetty. I turned the six upside down, it's a nine now. Now this is quite a big part of the beef that seems to get lost in translation because a lot of people haven't actually listened to this review and they just assumed that this was an hour long takedown by Joe Budden of Drake. But the thing is this review wasn't necessarily categorically negative. And having listened to the whole review in its entirety, I would probably say that I have these takeaways. Firstly, Joe doesn't like the album but it's because he's disappointed that Drake doesn't sound as inspired as he used to sound. And Joe is saying this as a fan. I think that what I heard was a man that was so far gone from himself. Drake know himself. He, I think he has a good idea of who I am at my core. Not a bitter bit of blood run through my veins. Everybody's not built to deal with stardom that way. I am not. Self-awareness is important. 
Secondly, throughout the podcast, Joe makes countless assertions that he's a Drake fan, that he loves Drake, that he liked old school Drake, and that his disappointment is mainly based in being let down by what Drake did with this album. I love Drake. If this is your first time hearing me speak about Drake, let me inform you. I am one of the biggest Drake fans that there is. He knows this about me as well. I go way back, I'm well documented. I don't need to get into all of that. And the third takeaway that I got from this review is that whoever's selling Joe that Adderall needs to lower the dose. It ends the way every Drake album normally ends as far as the braggadocious, triumphant background music. All of his projects end that way. This time, it was different. I couldn't feel it. I didn't believe it. There's a feeling missing throughout the entire album. I won't stand for it. He's greater than that. Fuck that. So sure, it was a negative review, but there was a lot of positivity in there, and Joe was pretty adamant that he was coming from the position of being a Drake fan. And I think a lot of people, including probably Drake himself, jumped to conclusions without actually listening to this piece. I mean, to date, on the official Joe Budden YouTube channel, this video still only has around 22,000 views when I watched it. However, Joe must have had an inkling, and I'm pretty sure that he knew he was gonna ruffle more feathers than Buster Rhymes in the Victory video. This is exemplified by the fact that in the lead up to releasing this podcast, Joe had teased some slightly more outrageous outrageous clips on his Instagram. So he knew he was poking the bear. He's been at the top of this music game for years. What has he told you different? So this is all well and good, and I feel on balance that even if it was a little bit shouty, the review was fairly reasonable. And I think the negative aspects of Joe's reviews are made even more palatable by the fact that not every reviewer in the mainstream media or on the internet liked Drake's album. All Music gave views two and a half stars, saying that Drake seems like he's still fighting a battle that he won a long time ago, and that the album is as boring as a needle stuck in a groove. Ouch. The Independent Pandit giving it two out of five, saying that rarely has one man complained so much about so little. And this Amazon reviewer gave it one star, suggesting that this would be a really great album for anybody suffering from insomnia. Where's your Jeff Bezos diss, Drake? So Joe wasn't the only one giving a scathing review of the album, and this at least gives Drake more things to complain about on his next album. However, a week after that review, French Montana teases a clip from a new song that he's got coming out called No Shopping that features Drake. And as part of that teaser, we hear a couple of lines from Drake where it sounds like he's referencing Joe Budden's one hit, pump, pump, pump it up. Budden immediately tweets about this, and he's skeptical that the song's even about him at this stage. And I'm with him. I mean, Drake surely wouldn't be that petty to just go at Joe Budden over the review. Why isn't Drake going at all of these other reviewers? But due to label politics and the fact that French's relevancy was kind of flagging at the time, this song didn't actually end up getting released until a little bit later. So we're gonna return to that shortly. Then on June the 4th, a month after that Joe Budden podcast, Drake drops the song 4 p.m. in Calabasas. And this song is pretty feisty. It's mainly concerned with dissing Diddy for having slapped Drake not too long before this. And if you don't know a lot about that incident, and check out the other video on my channel, Why Diddy Slapped Drake. But amongst the buttload of P. Diddy disses on that song, there's a couple of lines that are construed as being a diss towards Joe Budden. Especially the part where it says, you hit my line to ask where you bitch at. Funnily enough, after this song came out, Joe actually tweeted in approval of Drake, saying that this was the most inspired he'd heard him in a long time. And then of course, he jumped on his podcast and suggested that he was 100% certain that Drake was talking about him in this song. Now, I thought that all of that was about me before I even caught that they hold demeanor just spells envy line. That's the second Instagram clip. What has he told you different from take care to now? He's answering you. Well, he's answering me anyway. Dissed or addressed. Mm. And I certainly ain't the rapper that ever was just the nigga that got, I love this type of shit. So if I'm letting it rock and not rapping yet, and you keep firing with your little fucking friends, and I say that as calm as can be. That I heard on that freestyle sounds real fucking inspired. So at this point, Joe decides to pump it up and release the first diss song, Making a Murderer Part 1. This frankly was slightly too long, a six minute roast fest, going at Drake with a few rusty bars, but also some pointed lines putting him in his place. The main points that he makes on this track are one, Drake was too sensitive to Joe's criticism on the podcast. Two, Drake is basically a bitch for sneak dissing. And three, Joe suggests that he's already been with a lot of these women that Drake is supposedly involved with. This track also brings up an alleged relationship between Drake and Joe Budden's ex-girlfriend Tahiri Jose. Right, so sidebar here, back in the day, Joe used to date this chick called Tahiri. They appear together on the VH1 show Love and Hip Hop New York, including this cringeworthy scene where Joe attempts to propose to Tahiri and is duly knocked back. Love is trust. And I don't trust you right now. Joe and Tahiri eventually split up, but several years later, Drake was spotted swimming with her in the Dominican Republic with dolphins. So this appearance sparked rumors that Drake and Tahiri were dating, though she has denied that this developed into anything more substantial. Uh, what happened with that? 
<laughs> he went his way and I went mine. But if we go back to that classic 2009 video that you saw at the start of this video, Drake is flexing his usual sly ways and putting a little bit of a chirps on Tahiri, even back then. Tahiri looks great tonight, congratulations. Tahiri looks great, she's Amazing. in there, she's celebrating the king shit, yep. she's doing Phenomenal job. Her head's getting bigger and bigger by the fucking day. I got to lower fucking self-esteem. Yeah, I, I'd be very scared if I was here. Why though? I don't know. I fear, I fear... Shit like that. I fear shit like that, man. Joe has denied that the Tahiri Drake thing was a problem, and he suggested in several interviews that at the time he actually gave Drake his blessing to mess around with Tahiri. Are you sure this has nothing to do with Drake fucking Tahiri? No, me and him have fucked a million of the same women. If you could fuck her, and I can say to you, I know what's happening. I'm cool. I don't feel no type of way at all. I'm cool. Have a blast. Go flourish. Have a yeah. blast, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Dolphins. Another big part of this diss song was, of course, suggesting that Drake uses a ghostwriter and that his bars aren't authentic. This is essentially just digging up the same allegations that kicked off the Drake Meek Mill beef. But funnily enough, in Making a Murderer, Joe also decides to say F Meek Mill too, because he'd actually been feuding with Meek Mill from the year before after he made fun of him and Nicki Minaj's relationship, suggesting that he doesn't like seeing a street dude like Meek doing this sappy shit. Oh, you know, sappy shit, like proposing to your girlfriend on Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. Meek caught offense at the lines that were leveled against him, and even at one point tried to sick Nicki Minaj's fans on Joe Budden. Oh, and Meek also posted a cryptic sneak diss on social media. Wow, what a gangster. I believe the term is Twitter fingers? But Joe continued to clown Meek on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie, that last tweet had me dying. And just a week after making a murderer dropped, Joe decides to go back to back on Drizzy and drops the second song in this beef, Wake. The artwork featured Oda from the Texas Rangers baseball team, punching Batista from the Toronto Blue Jays. And this is Joe's way of essentially flipping the Toronto baseball player that was on the cover of Drake's own back to back. Smart. Now the content of this song is a little bit different and it goes after Drake for a couple of extra things, including his clout chasing and suggesting that he was just riding the waves of Fetty Wap and Gucci Mane in order to stay relevant. He also calls out Drake for having a fake celebrity persona, as well as suggesting that Drake steals the best songs from his OVO camp for himself. Now here's what's interesting, no response actually comes from Drake and Joe Budden takes to Twitter and whips up a Twitter storm, but then later deletes everything that he said. Now this is a crazy rant, but let's keep it all the way 100. Joe is speaking facts here. He said that everybody cheered when Drake went back to back on Meek Mill and now they're silent when Joe has done it. Facts. By Drake's own standards, if he wants to take the W for going back to back on Meek with no response, then he has to take the L for Joe Budden going back to back on him. These were good diss tracks. Joe went in, he had good points, and Drake had nothing to say. So by Drake's own logic, this seems to be a win for Joe. But let's keep going. On the 16th of July, the song No Shopping with French Montana drops. It came with a cool cover art that featured a receipt, which is handy because it makes it a lot easier to return it from whichever bargain bin that you bought this from. Only joking, I like the record. So this is that original record that French had teased before that had the pump it up lines that were directed at Joe Budden. But then again, you could definitely construe a whole bunch of other lines from this song as being pointed at Joe. Later in the song, Drake says, how are you celebrating like the winning team? Calm down, calm down. And not a lot of people know, but Calm Down was actually a known track on Joe Budden's first album. Just go back and listen to Drake's verse. It sounds like Drake is going at Joe on the whole thing. Joe immediately claps back in the most gangster way you possibly could. Twitter memes. Then within mere hours of that song dropping, Joe drops his third diss song, Afraid. This featured cover art that shows Toronto's famous CN Tower that's actually from Drake's Views cover art, Engulf in Smoke. And I can only assume that's because somebody left a copy of Young Shush's debut mixtape up there. This track is much more soft-spoken, it features a Drake sample, and just generally has a beat that's a lot more like the kind of thing that Drake would actually rap over. Now to me, this seemed like a bit more of a desperate attempt to try and make this song a little bit more marketable and actually, you know, get it out there in front of more people, the kind of people that would listen to Drake. But even today, it's only got around 200,000 views on YouTube, so it didn't really reach that many people. But the main point of this song, as you can tell from the title, is Joe is basically calling out Drake for being too afraid to respond to his disses. Now in my opinion, at this point, Joe kind of sort of got finessed by Drake. The fact is, at this point, Joe had already gone back to back on Drake without a response. So essentially, he's got a W. And you could say that that no shopping track kind of served as a response to Joe's disses. But then again, we all knew that that song had already been recorded months ago because French had teased a snippet of Drake's verse with the Joe Budden diss before all of this had even gone down. So it's kind of a response, but it's also not a response because it's old news. Which is tough for Joe because that then puts him in a position where if he doesn't respond, it kind of looks like Drake got the last word, even though this diss was old news. But at the same time, by responding, he can't then really say that Drake is afraid because if Joe responds, he's acknowledging that Drake has responded to him, therefore, 
can't really say that Drake's afraid of you, because he's responded and you've then responded in turn. It's a real catch-22. I don't know whether it was an intentional finesse by Drake, but Joe was in a sticky spot, and to be honest, he probably did the right thing by releasing Afraid. This whole thing was even more confused by the fact that three days later, French Montana is being interviewed inexplicably whilst getting a haircut. I think people are also talking about it because Drake may or may not be dissing Joe Budden on the track. Oh, I don't want, I don't have nothing to do with that one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and he suggests that the whole song is not a Joe Budden diss, despite kind of tweeting something three days before that seemed to suggest that it definitely was. And a few days after that, Joe pops up on the Brilliant Idiots podcast with Charlemagne and Andrew Schultz to break down the whole beat. Joe tries to downplay the fact that he essentially started it by dragging Drake on his podcast and constantly suggesting that Drake really started this by making his Pump It Up diss. Then again, should Drake have really been upset about a bad review when quite a few people were giving him bad reviews? I don't know, he had a personal relationship with Drake, and that seems to be what the outcome of this interview suggests. So then they put that pump it up clip out. French, Instagram, pump, pump it up. Pump, pump it up. Whoa, homeboy, pump it up. You want to use your celebrity to do that to me? We smoked hookah together. <laughs> However, the day after that, Drake decides to diss Joe in the most childish way. I should have brought Joe Button up here and let him do pump it up one time and like... Fuck the Joe responded on Twitter with a devil face and suggested that Drake is just looking for attention. He then backed this up by immediately looking for attention himself and releasing another diss song. Joe drops the new track called Just Because, and to be honest, he doesn't really have too much new content to say at this point. Interest is really waning, and to date, this video only has 350,000 views on YouTube. And the impression I got was that in the vein of the title of this song, Joe was releasing this tune just because. Why not? So despite not actually contributing anything new to the beef, the fact that Joe had more bars for Drake, once again, back to back, Drake hasn't dropped any more disses since the last Joe diss, apart from dissing him on stage. It kind of sounds like another win for Joe. Hip hop rules apply, that seems to be how it works. He put it on wax, Joe kept coming with more records. Sure, they're getting a bit boring at this point, but he's dropping smoke, he's dropping music. Like, what more do you want from the guy? But. Here is where things get beyond parody. Here is where this story jumped the shark. The day after Joe drops that diss song on the 24th, some teenage OVO stands run up on Joe outside his house. Joe's pulling out, I assume on his way to work, in a pretty smooth looking Mercedes S-Class Coupe. That podcast money paying off, ain't it Joe? But anyway, Joe is on some street shit. He immediately confronts them, chases them down with rocks, and literally threatens to kill them. This is not the internet. I will kill one of you. I gotta say, this incident was pretty hilarious and it led to some exquisite memes. Interestingly, while that chase is going on, one of the kids decides to be an ultimate clout chaser and shout out his own Twitter handle in the video. And in one of the most petty moves of this entire beef, Drake ends up following that kid. I mean, that's a funny move, but again, kind of pathetic when you still consider that the scoreboard is 4-1 to Joe. Following that incident, Joe actually made one of the most mature moves that I've seen in this beef, and to be honest, any beef ever. Joe said while he was being interviewed on Hot Ones that he actually tracked one of those kids down and visited their mother at home. I said, I'm gonna catch one of them niggas and I'm gonna bring them in here and I'm gonna beat their fucking ass. Right. And that's what I did. And then I went to their house the next morning. I went there to go speak to a parent or someone who loves that kid. Joe continues to do the rounds and during a podcast at ESPN, he actually breaks down some bizarre DMs that he'd been getting from Drake during this whole beef. Apparently Drake offered Joe tickets to his Madison Square Garden show. And he also said to him that if he can release 25 diss tracks between now and then, he would give him $10,000. I bet you can't release 25 diss records between now and then. So then it was the laughing emoji. And then he followed that with, if you can, I will uh, give you $10,000. <laughs> LOL. I said, LOL, maybe not 25, but I bet you I can get close to 20. Mm. And that's how, that's all out out say that was from that conversation. The whole thing's unusual, especially the offer of tickets, because usually Drake's offers of free tickets to his concerts end up in the DMs of 16 year old girls. So after this, things go quiet for a little while. But a week later, irrelevant radio personality and 44 year old liar Ebro decides to hit the airwaves on Hot 97 and whip up a fake story suggesting that Eminem is getting ready to diss Drake because him and Joe Budden are affiliated on the same label through Slaughterhouse. This was of course later proven to be complete cap. And 
a couple of weeks after those initial lies, Joe decides to make an appearance on Eve Ho's show, where Ebro amazed viewers by being able to keep Joe engaged and keep his own teeth in his mouth for 40 minutes straight. Joe gave a brief explanation of the Drake beef, and he also shared with the Hot 97 crew a couple more of Drake's weird DMs. I don't have any more bars for him. That's it. Well, I do, but <laughs> we couldn't get to the end because he kept DMing me. Um, he told me that he DM'd you, but he was just asking you if it, you were okay in this tough time. I missed right. the joke. I missed the I missed the underlying motive. I missed the are you okay? You're not doing well. It just was weird and creepy. Joe goes on to deny that he is on drugs or on drink and says that he's over the Drake beef, but was one record away from destroying Drake's whole career. A DM saying, "I hope you're doing well in tough times." I don't know what tough times you're referring to. Well, there has been rumors circulating that. Um, you're on drugs. There hasn't been any rumors. Drinking. There hasn't been any rumors circulating about that. There's no one more in tune to what the rumor wire is saying than me. If we're being perfectly honest, I, I don't give a fuck about the Drake stuff. I don't care what his point was. I don't care what he meant. I don't care. I don't care about any of it. I would have loved to get to my my finale, which was. Oh no, I can't say that. In you got to wait. OVO niggas start acting up again. So but, you got to uh, save it. You got to save the finale and the stash. Oh yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd ruin hip hop. I'd ruin hip hop. How what? would you ruin? Uh, uh, why? You why? What do you mean? Mm, I just know a lot. That's all. That's a classic maneuver. In fact, I believe Joe also added that he has a hot new girlfriend, but you can't meet her because she goes to a different school. The interview is then duly ruined because Hot 97 decide to wheel out Marissa Mendez, who was Joe's co-host on the podcast before Joe eventually fired her by text. This leads to an uncomfortable confrontation, the complete breakdown of the conversation, and eventually Joe walking out of the interview. Good work, guys. A few days after that, Ebro's lion ass was exposed even more when Drake decided to bring Eminem out at a Detroit show on his Summer 16 tour. Eminem posted an Instagram with Drake with the caption, Views from the Joe, which does sound a little bit like a Joe Budden diss initially, but then you've got to remember the fact that this event took place in the Joe Lewis arena. But considering how smart Eminem is with his bars, he's got to know that that ain't a coincidence and people are obviously gonna be talking. And sure, this whole thing does sound like a pretty big power move by Drake to kind of intimidate Joe Budden and make himself look like the bigger artist, sure, but doesn't really put any points on the scoreboard. It's not a diss track, it's not that pointed at Joe, it's not an overt diss, it's all subliminal behind the scenes smoke and mirror stuff, so doesn't really affect the outcome of the beef at this point. Joe goes on to address some of the Eminem stuff on a podcast that he streams on Periscope, but later deletes. Eminem is not ever jumping to Joe Budden's aid. Eminem has never jumped in anything. I'm sure him and Ebro had that talk. I don't think that Drake is res ever responding to Ebro. I don't think he's responding to me. I don't think he's responding to me. He goes on to end the beef and suggests that continuing to diss Drake was essentially pointless. I think that he responds to the people. Absolutely. Your emotions, that's what's causing this. That That is what is stirring all of this shit. So that led my brain to a very interesting conundrum here that that totally just stems from insecurity. Y'all could call me nuts. It's okay. I've been called nuts before. He's very insecure. Now, this is where I get confused because if I'm Drake, I've built my entire empire off set insecurity. That's exactly why I stopped dissing him. <laughs> It was pointless. And the last we heard of that beef was in October, where in an interview with Rap Radar, Joe suggested that he had just continued to diss Drake in order to prove a point. But ultimately, he suggested that he thought the whole thing was a mistake. But he did give a final rib to Drake and French Montana, suggesting that that No Shopping song was a complete flop. More specifically, reminding people that French's Mac and Cheese 4 album ended up getting completely shelved and abandoned, even in spite of No Shopping going gold. And essentially, that's the end of the beef. I mean, a couple of years later, Drake took a few pot shots at Joe Budden in the B-side to God's plan, Diplomatic Immunity. Mm, too little, two years too late, in my opinion. Joe didn't have much to say, and at this point, he'd moved on, though he did address it on his podcast. Mm. I, I don't take this as a, a diss. I think the newer generation don't really know what a diss is anymore, so anytime you are directing this, something towards somebody or, or this you This is can definitely hear, a diss. How? I've seen budding careers Tur turn into turn just into sitting around, sit around talking about, talk other, about careers, other careers, judging Where, their peers. How, where's the diss? Quite frankly, I don't know how you could give Drake a W in any situation. He made some smart moves and he did that French Montana feature, but 
hip hop rules, man. Joe came with bars, he came with songs, he came with disses, he put them on wax. Probably put out too many tracks, if anything, but hell, he was putting them out and they weren't bad. Sure, Drake came out the bigger artist, he wins the popularity contest, he's got more fans, got more money, more opportunities, fine. And don't get me wrong, I love Drake, despite all of the shit that I talk about him. So let's not get it twisted. Going into this beef, Drake was already the biggest rapper on the planet, so he didn't really have anything to lose. Whereas Joe was kind of on down and out at this point, and he bigged himself up by taking this beef on. And essentially, you know, in the years following, Joe has really rebuilt his career. He's rebuilt his reputation. He's had a lot of big shows, a lot of big moves. He's doing good things now. So. Drake hasn't really fallen off, but at the same time he got bodied by Pusha T. He's still on top, he's still breaking huge billboard records of course, but as a rapper, he's stayed on top, he's still been in the same position, he's, he's dropped hit records. But at the end of the day, by Drake's own rules, Joe went back to back to back to back on him. If he wants to keep the W for Meek, he's got to take the L for Joe. That's just the way that I see it, and I just don't know how you can see it any other way based on everything that there is to understand about how hip-hop beef works. So congratulations, Joe and Drake. You kind of played yourself, but then again, let's not forget that we all know that from the start, Drake was never going to respond. All right, so when do you see your first diss coming? This me, you'll never hear a reply from We heard the line, that was just a line. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. Make sure that you check out my merch store and go and cop a tea to support the channel. Go and check out my Patreon so that you can add even more support to the channel and keep things running. I really appreciate everyone's support. I also wanna do a little shout out to hotnewhiphop.com because in my research for this story, they had probably the most comprehensive article on this beef. It was really helpful in filling in the blanks and I don't wanna get people in the comment going, oh, this is exactly the same as the Hot New Hip Hop article. It was helpful, filled in a lot of the blanks and I just wanna shout out that article because usually I use a lot of sources, but their article was just the bomb. So fucking good work guys, appreciate that. And also, I just wanna say a huge thank you and a huge shout out to y'all for helping me get this this little bad boy. Oh man, I got my play button. Uh, I've already got a video up on the channel, so you kind of know how I feel about it. I'm just super gassed that I've got this, so I just wanted to say thank you again to everybody. You'll see this in the background um, of my vids, and it's just a mad ting. So yeah, that's why that's there. I just wanted to. I just like showing this thing off. I'm obsessed with it. If I'm honest with you, love it. Crazy. I'd always dreamed of having it. So sick. Thank you for watching and everything. I've got a couple of pretty, pretty big boy vids coming for you guys soon that are gonna be mad different to anything you've ever seen, ever with your eyes. So keep them peeled for that. Until next time, thanks very much. And of course, a peace out.